For just the second time, Iowa is playing in the Big Ten championship game. The last time Iowa played in the title game was in 2015. The Hawks came up short in that game to Michigan State 16-13. This time around, Iowa is a 10-point underdog. But being an underdog is nothing new to the Hawkeyes. With the style they play, not many people are going to make them favorites. And that's fine by the Hawks. As they only need to make sure that they believe they can win and then go out and execute their game plan. At this point, we're used to it. Um, a lot of guys have been asking me about this today. Um, and ever since I've been here, we've been underdog and years before me. Uh, so we're getting, we're used to it, and we definitely take pride in accepting that role. It gives us a chip on our shoulder and motivation to go out there and compete and show that we can beat any time and any team on any given day. We've kind of been the underdog all year, it feels like. Even when we were uh, ranked number two, you know, there was still plenty of uh, noise out there about, you know, who we were and what we were doing. And um, I know I like being the underdog. It's another game, obviously, to prove um, you know, ourselves, but you know, it's another opportunity to play a game, and you know, this time it's for a Big Ten title, and that's one of our goals to win. You know, obviously, win the West, and then you know, win in Indy. So, um, yeah, there's maybe a little bit more uh, um, energy, but you know, we're going to be excited to go come Saturday. Iowa and Michigan play for the Big Ten championship game this Saturday in Indianapolis. Kickoff at 7:17. WQAD will be there and have complete coverage of the game from Lucas Oil Stadium. To the surprise of no one in the volleyball community, former Sterling standout Lexi Rodriguez has excelled on the college courts. Lexi was named to the first team All Big Ten, All Freshman Team, and the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. She leads Nebraska in digs with 442, has 111 assists, and added 20 aces. Her transition from high school to college was made easier when she enrolled at Nebraska in January hard being a freshman and just getting put into that role where you have to take ownership and you have to be a leader on this team like because I'm in all pretty much all six rotations I think in the beginning it was a little hard for me but they've made me feel so comfortable and so like deserving of my position that it's been a lot easier as the weeks have gone on. It means a lot. I mean, I do everything I can to get the ball up and give my team the opportunity to score points. Um, I always knew that I could do this, and so I wouldn't say it's surprising, but I'm definitely very proud of myself and how I've been able to perform. Lexi and Nebraska will host Campbell this Friday in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Iowa State is off to a perfect 6-0 start to the season, knocking off a couple of top 25 teams along the way. Let's check in at the Hilton. Iowa State hosting Arkansas Pine Bluff Cyclones defense with a steal. Isaiah Brockington throws down the dunk. The assist to Jackson Brockington. Game high 23 points. Tonight the Cyclones then take things outside. Gabe Kalsher, long range jumper. More from ISU, Brockington from the corner, his lone yes. triple of the game, splashes in, Cyclones lead, stretches to double digits, Davenport native, Trey Sampson, tough at the other end, the alley-oop slam, he had 16 for Pine Bluff, but Iowa State was clicking on all cylinders, Kalsher, another triple, he had nine points in this one, Brockington with a double-double, 23-10, and Iowa State rolling to an 83-64 win, they get Creighton on Saturday night on the road. On the local college courts, Ambrose in action against Lincoln. First half, Bees find themselves down. They get it to Patrick Torrey, and the high post gets the home court roll, tying in at 10. Lincoln would move back in front. Darnell Latham Jr. knocking down the three, and the Lynx up 13 to 10. Ambrose still down. Tom Kazanecki using some muscle in the post. His baby hook drops, cutting it to 1915. A few trips later, SAU gets it into the corner. To Nolan Griffin splashing in the three. Ambrose still down six at that point. They will fall on this one, 78-54. Same two teams on the court for the ladies, picking it up in the third quarter. SAU in front. Janie Prestigar the drive. Fowlers are miss. Second shot goes. She scores 19. Ambrose up 44-26. Queen Bee's in transition. A couple quick passes. Madeline Prestigar finishing at the rim. SAU leading by 16. SAU still pushing the pace. Maddie Cash attacking. Nice dish to Kylie Robleski for two of her 13. It's a 23-point lead, and Ambrose can shoot from the outside. The skip pass over to Avery Everts. Hitting the mid-range jumper, it's a runaway as Ambrose wins 83-56. Now to historic Musgrove Fieldhouse and Sterling as the Warriors. Rally from an early deficit to Rock Ridge. Kyle Billings hits the three. 
Sterling builds a four-point lead. Later, Rock Ridge's Nate Henry will stroke the three ball. He's just going to mind his own business down the court. He doesn't pick anybody up as he watches Sterling's John Paul Schilling launch. Well, that's a 55-footer to beat the quarter buzzer. Later, the Rockets work the ball nicely. That's Jace Wiseman firing in three of his 19. This one remains tight. Sterling counters with the big man, Lucas Austin, right down Broadway for the layup. The Warriors rally from an eight-point deficit with 13 unanswered points to post a 45-31 victory. Fun game tonight out down in Sterling. Yeah, great game too. What's going on with 